In the news tonight, more than 800 new COVID cases and three deaths. Health Ministry urges Fijians to get vaccinated. And WHO recommends against lockdowns. Good evening, Fiji. A 15-year-old death is uh, currently being investigated to determine the cause. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says this comes as Fiji recorded three COVID-19 deaths in the 24-hour period ending at 8 a.m. yesterday. They were all not vaccinated. The first COVID-19 death is a 56-year-old man from Davui Levu. He was admitted to the CWM hospital with COVID-19 symptoms and he died three days after admission. The second COVID-19 death is a 68-year-old man from Suva. He was referred to the CWM hospital from the Samambula Screening Clinic. He was noted to be in severe respiratory distress. His condition worsened in the hospital after he died one day after admission. The third COVID-19 death is a 69-year-old woman from Nambua. She was referred to the CWM hospital from the Samambula Health Center. She presented in severe respiratory distress. Her condition worsened in hospital and she died on the same day. We now join Christiana Uluwai live. Christiana, what can you tell us about the latest number of cases announced so far? Surpassed the 800 uh, daily cases of COVID recorded, and which was something that we have been in anticipating since it was predicted by the Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, who also stated last night that we now have a, a seven day uh, average daily death of three COVID deaths per day. And also, uh, our daily test positivity is still three times higher than the World Health Organization's 5% threshold, sitting in at 15.5% in the last update. And uh, also, three more deaths were recorded last night, um, which, was quite, uh, which is quite uh, another interesting uh, thing to notice that a 15 year old. Uh, 15 year old's death has been investigated to ascertain the cause of her death and uh, uh, out of the 49 people that passed away with COVID uh, during this outbreak, 41 of them were not vaccinated at, at all and only eight of them were fully, uh, uh, were not vaccinated, uh, took their first dose uh, rather and uh, the Permanent Secretary for Health says that uh, we should expect more numbers so Fijians uh, shouldn't uh, rest on their laurel, we're not out of the woods yet so you're advised to do whatever you can to protect your own little bubble from being infected uh, by this very deadly virus, Venina. Thank you, Christiana. The health ministry is concerned with an increasing number of COVID-19 deaths as none of the individuals that died from the virus in Fiji has been fully in vaccinated. While speaking during a talkback show on Radio Fiji, one health minister, Dr. Iferemi Wangainambete, says the only way to lower the COVID cases and deaths is to receive both the jabs. Details with Josiah Nanunga. The health ministry has clarified that out of the 49 COVID-19 deaths in this outbreak, 41 individuals were unvaccinated, while eight of them received only one dose of the vaccine, which is concerning. This Delta variant is more severe than the first wave of the pandemic last year. The health ministry will continue to push for more people to be vaccinated so they have a strong immune system that will protect themselves from the virus. The uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, which we are administering in Fiji, does very well. It has been shown to offer 92% protection against hospitalization from the Delta variant of COVID-19 present in the country. Fiji has also recorded 19 COVID-positive patients who died from serious medical conditions that they had before they contracted COVID-19. A good number of individuals who have died from COVID-19 had some sort of pre-existing non-COVID medical condition. This is especially the elderly who are at great risk from contracting the virus. There have now been 51 deaths due to COVID-19 in Fiji, with 49 recorded during the outbreak that started in April this year. Chosayena Nunga, FBC News. 
Fiji currently has amongst the highest rates in the world of new cases of COVID-19 and the consequence is larger numbers of people dying from this virus. Professor of Public Health at the University of Otago, Dr. Michael Baker, highlighted that a high coverage of vaccination in most vulnerable groups can greatly decrease the consequences of a pandemic wave like this. Lina Reese has more. With Fiji being amongst the handful of countries that have taken the oath of no jab, no job, Dr. Baker says being unvaccinated and in public service greatly increases the risk of transmission. If you're not vaccinated, that's increasing the risk to you in terms of your um, occupational health and safety, but also the risk you pose to the, the, the clients you're working with. So I think it is a very defensible policy um, for the public sector, particularly healthcare workers and others who are interacting with the public. A member of the New Zealand and OSMAT team in Suva believes government has the expertise and the know-how to support communities as Fiji fights to contain the spread of the virus. As that lockdown means different things to different people. If you actually look around Suva at the moment, many of the precautions that are currently being taken would be equivocal to a level three or a level four lockdown in New Zealand. Um, for example, only essential services being open, um, many, many uh, institutions are closed. The New Zealand OSMAP team is also working to assist in preventing transmission of diseases in healthcare facilities. So what they're doing is going into hospitals and healthcare facilities and some of the facilities that are being set up in the community and actually looking at practical ways that given the layout, how can we prevent transmission happening, particularly for healthcare workers and amongst patients. The New Zealand health experts believe Fiji needs more support now than ever to help in the fight against COVID-19 in the country. Lena Reese, FBC News. Lockdowns are not part of the World Health Organization's recommended public health and social measures. COVID safe measures currently enforced is a proven effective mechanism. Christiana Uluwai reports. Wearing masks, physical distancing and avoiding crowded places are a combination of interventions that can help stop COVID transmission. Reduced use, inappropriate use of public health and social measures. Um, it, the use of these measures does not mean lockdown. Public health and social measures is not lockdown. Hard lockdowns as a strategy to halt the COVID transmission is off the table at the moment. A period of 28 days of a hard lockdown as some are calling for, cannot be strictly enforced everywhere in Fiji. And our experts tell us it would not kill off the virus, but it would kill jobs and it would kill our country's future. COVID safe measures currently being implemented have proven to effectively work in minimizing transmission. Fijians need to strictly adhere to these measures at the individual level in order for it to be effective. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. The Ministry of Health will soon begin administering the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine, which is expected to arrive in Fiji within the next week or two. Vaccination Task Force Head Dr. Rachel Devi says this has been made possible through the support of the United States of America under the COVAX facility vaccine dose sharing mechanism. This is a worldwide initiative aimed at equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines directed by Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, CEPI, WHO and UNICEF. Kritika Kumar reports. An individual requires two doses of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine for full protection, with the second dose to be administered 28 days after the first dose. benefit of um, Moderna is you get fully immunized within 28 days rather than having to wait for another month like the AstraZeneca. Dr. Devi says the age limit will remain the same as the AstraZeneca vaccine. However, pregnant women will be able to receive the Moderna vaccine to protect themselves. Basically, the, this will definitely boost it up, especially right now we, have, um, we weren't vaccinating our pregnant women with the AstraZeneca unless obviously individuals consented. The ministry currently continues with its vaccination drive to reach the 80% target. Prime Minister Varenge Beni Marama has urged Fijians to get vaccinated due to the escalating number of COVID-19 cases. Vaccines work on a known principle that by exposing each of us to a weakened form of the disease, 
we can teach our body's immune system to fight it. The Ministry of Health recommends people receive the same type of COVID-19 vaccine for both first and second doses without mixing them. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And to our latest COVID-19 update. Fiji has another record as of yesterday with 860 new cases of COVID-19 for the period ending at 8 a.m. yesterday. There were also three deaths. Fiji has recorded 9,451 cases since April of this year with a total of 9,521 cases since the first case was reported in March last year. There are now 7,932 active cases in isolation with 1,518 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 51. Up ahead, silver market to enforce new measures. And social gatherings stop arrest list. Welcome back. Market vendors at the Silver Municipal Market have been advised to receive the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as practicable. Silver City Council Special Administrators Chair Isikeli Tikondondua says they will soon enforce the no jab, no entry rule at the market to ensure public safety. He adds people including market vendors should now understand the importance of being vaccinated considering the magnitude of our current situation. For us in the Super City, we are making compulsory enough for all our workers to get the jab. And we will be rolling this out to the market vendors, the permanent market vendors, that they have to have the jab. No jab, no entry. And I'm thankful that uh, the um, government have uh, you know, taken a strong stand on this uh, uh, position. Breach of social gathering restrictions stopped the number of arrests over the last 24-hour period. Acting Police Commissioner Rusiati Tundravu says of the 43 reports for breach of health and curfew restrictions, social gathering recorded 24 cases, failure to wear a mask had eight arrests, curfew and breach of Ministry of Health guideline on PSV, four cases each and three for breach of containment. The Southern Division recorded 29 cases in total, 22 for social gathering, four for failure to wear a mask and three for breach of curfew. The arrests for social gatherings were recorded in Daubati involving five men who were drinking homebrew, Cunningham Stage 2 involving four men and four women who were drinking alcohol in Delai Tokatoka and Narere Stage 1. A 31-year-old man was found drunk and walking along Wailea Street while four men were arrested in Andera for failing to wear a mask. The Western Division recorded seven reports in total while the Eastern Division recorded seven cases in total. A Vanua Levu farmer has become one of the first to invest a system that turns kitchen waste into clean renewable energy and is urging other farmers to follow suit. The home biogas not only produces cooking gas but also rich liquid fertilizer. Eleanor Turangai View has more. It's a self operating mechanism. The home biogas system has the capacity to recycle waste food scraps and animal manure into gas for cooking and rich fertilizer for the farm. The system will uh, really help farmers to uh, save a lot of money. It takes around three weeks to produce the gas once installed and it can accommodate two to three hours of cooking in a day. Oh, the benefit is uh, usually controlling environment waste. First benefit to me is to keep uh, waste, I mean kitchen waste, uh, and uh, it's really build uh, the characters for us to do that. For Amen Wolowola and his family in Nakasa Wele, East Akonrobe, the installation of the system means no more cutting firewood or buying gas and fertilizer. Because I'm a farmer and I'm uh, planting vegetables and the benefit too is use uh, liquid manure and it's organic. Pacific Grow, which makes and sells the product, says the environmental impact is huge. You're saving trees because you're not cutting firewood anymore because you have free gas. And uh, you're, you do, you're capturing a lot of, uh, of uh, carbon emissions, which uh, you know, contributes a lot to climate change. You know, the big talk now is carbon emissions. 
and this system can save you around six tons of carbon uh, annually. The home buyer gas also promotes sustainable living, especially during this pandemic. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. Cane supply to the Lombasa sugar mill is slowly increasing. Eleanor Turangayview reports more farmers are making use of the current dry season to harvest their cane despite the boycott by others. Fiji's dry season runs from April to October and cane farmers are making use of this time to harvest their cane. End of the year, now it's a dry spell at the end of the year. It will be the rainy season start around September, late September and October. So we are just now trying to start in the dry season and we don't want to suffer. It's the farmers who will, go into, who will be suffering in the end. Eh? Despite the boycott by many farmers, others say they can't afford to leave their cane standing for long. A lot of us have loans to pay for our land and for that we have to cut cane. Last year cyclones affected our crops and if we do not harvest now, this will affect our yield. The current pandemic has seen very little economic activity and farmers are looking to cane to sustain their livelihoods. All the governments of the countries they are facing this year. So I encourage the farmers, um, if we can harvest our cane, and uh, I believe that uh, the government won't, uh, won't uh, leave us behind. The farmers feel that with the country going through a tough time, support by cane farmers is crucial as our economy depends on their crop so that FSC can produce sugar and export it. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. Ahead in sports, Flying Fijians build up for 2023 World Cup. Welcome back. The wait is now finally over for the Flying Fijians as they currently face the All Blacks after more than 10 years. For head coach Van Cotter, this is one of the many build-up matches for Fiji as they plan towards the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Caroline Tavi reports. For a Tier 2 nation like Fiji, taking on New Zealand is a milestone achievement in itself. We're a Tier 2 team, that's the way it is, so any games against Tier 1 will help us progress. The objective is World Cup 23, so if we can get more games of this quality, that'll be great. Um, because, like I say, it's a great way to measure progress. And Despite a few hurdles along the way, the team managed to pull through. We may have had some issues with getting players over. We may have had bits and pieces, but we're more interested in, in the game and what we can do. And like I said, we, we faced hurdles, but um, as a team, you know, we've, we've seemed to, to come through. The second test will be held in Hamilton on the 17th of July. Carly Nitavi, FBC Sports. Team Fiji has been cleared to prepare for the Olympic Games in Japan after their COVID-19 test results came back negative. The group represented by Team Fiji athletes and officials arrived in Tokyo yesterday and were awaiting test results. Fiji is being represented in rugby sevens, judo, karate, swimming, athletics and sailing. The spirits of the athletes are still high and they are looking forward to an exciting few days ahead. England striker Raheem Sterling is now focused on the task at hand, winning the country's first UEFA Euro 2020 title. The Manchester City forward has had an impressive campaign, scoring three goals in six matches at the tournament. Colombia has beaten Peru 3-2 in the third-place match playoffs of the Copa America today. Fiji Mbati rep Tane Milne scored a hat-trick in South Sydney Rabbitohs' 46-18 win over the Cowboys in Round 17 of the NRL last night. Milne and Alex Johnston scored three tries each as the latter went top of the NRL's try-scoring charts with 22 four-pointers. And to the weather, mainly fine weather prevailed over most places today. In the west, it was a sunny day with cloudy afternoon eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, partly cloudy conditions with brief showers. Up north, clear skies with cool temperatures. 
At sea, southeasterly winds 20 to 25 knots, winds increasing to 20 to 30 knots from tomorrow. Turning to the tide, the next high tide is at 2.15 a.m. with the next low tide at 8.11 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.41 a.m. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over Vanua Levu, Tavioni, Lao Group, eastern parts and interior of Viti Levu. Elsewhere, mainly fine, cool at nights. Looking further on to Monday, fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and the interior of large islands. Recapping our main stories, more than 800 new COVID cases and three deaths. Health Ministry urges Fijians to get vaccinated and WHO recommends against lockdowns. For these stories and others, you can tune in to our daily, daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, and to our poll question. This week, we're asking, are you satisfied with the seventh team named for the Olympics? Visit our FBC News website to answer. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos, email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest news and sports and listen to our six radio station live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow, Mother Manda.